from the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network. At Troy, Alabama's International University, this is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for August 25th, 2017. I'm Chelsea Law. And I'm Seth Hawk. Thank you for joining us this evening. The news content you normally see here on Trojan Vision News traditionally comes from the Troy campus and around the city of Troy. However, a class in the Hall School of Journalism offers students a chance to take their skills to the capital city for a semester. Sarah Singletary shows us how they do it in a story from our Montgomery News Bureau. Many students come to college with the dreams and hopes of one day joining a Greek fraternity or sorority. On Thursday night, a few students got to get a little taste of what it takes to join one of those organizations by attending the MPHC Convocation. The MPHC Convocation is our meet and greet for our historically black fraternities and sororities on our campus. Um, it's our official meet and greet that we require all of our students who are interested in our fraternities and sororities to come and attend. Naturally, with all the excitement after attending the convocation, many students are ready to get. A small group of Troy University broadcast journalism students will expand their reporting territory this semester in a class that takes them away from Troy's main campus to the university's Montgomery News Bureau. It's not every class that you get to go to Montgomery outside of campus on Troy University to cover stories. The class requires students to cover five stories in Montgomery between August and December. I get to do the College Color Day proclamation story. Just being able to go there um, and see the governor sign that proclamation, it's going to be really exciting. Each one set up, shot, and edited by the students. I'm planning on getting experience out of this class. That is probably my main reason for taking this. Students in the advanced television practicum class normally do most of their work here in Troy. But this semester they'll be here in Montgomery reporting news from the capital city. Covering stories here in Montgomery you get more experience because you were out of your normal realm of interviewing just students and teachers and the faculty on Troy. Wanting to gain experience and grow their network. I really hope to get experience. That's probably the most important thing that I hope to take out of this. Um, but also meeting people. Students say they have high hopes for the yeah, semester. Um, hopefully the chance to put these um, stories on my resume reel and hopefully to get a job um, when I graduate next summer. In Montgomery, Sarah Singletary, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Our next story com coming from the Montgomery News Bureau will be the annual Dragon Boat Races on the Alabama River. Tune in Monday to check it out. Last night, Troy University students who are looking to get involved with one of Troy University's National Panhellenic Council fraternities or sororities had the chance to learn about the organizations and process of becoming a member. Donna Robinson has the story. Many students come to college with the dreams and hopes of one day joining a Greek fraternity or sorority. On Thursday night, a few students got to get a little taste of what it takes to join one of those organizations by attending the MPHC Convocation. The MPHC Convocation is our meet and greet for our historically black fraternities and sororities on our campus. Um, it's our official meet and greet that we require all of our students who are interested in our fraternities and sororities to come and attend. Naturally, with all the excitement after attending the convocation, many students are ready to get that initiation process started. But there are a few more steps to take before joining one of those elite organizations. The next step is looking for organizations on uh, interest meeting, interest meeting or informational flyer. Um, a lot of organizations have, have, have them post up around campus. Um, so that way they can learn from, learn about them more, um, attend that meeting, and also go on from, from there. The MPHC Convocation is an annual event that leaders hope students will gain the knowledge and foundation needed to make a decision on what Greek organization to join. The MPHC Convocation is really like the knowledge of knowing, learning about each organization. Um, some people feel like it's kind of taboo to try to, to, to go up to people and talk to them personally. So it, it kind of gives you like some kind of um, discretion to be able to learn about each organization without anybody know, knowing what you're really interested in. Although there are certain credit hours and numerous other requirements that some students may not meet right now, there are still ways students can get this process started. Get involved on our campus, um, get some community service hours, um, make sure you have your GPA as high as level as you can possible. Donald Robinson, Troy Trojan Vision News. If a student has a question about involvement in any of Troy University's fraternities or sororities, they can visit the Student Involvement Office in Trojan Room 215. Troy University's international students have an outlet to share their culture with their American neighbors through the International Student Cultural Organization. ISCO held their first meeting of the school year Thursday night in the Hall of Honor, featuring dance perf dances performed by a variety of students. Justin Walker has the action. Unity is something you don't see much of in our world today. However, 
If you walked into the International Student Cultural Organization's first culture night of the semester, <laughs> unity was everywhere. Tonight was our first culture night of the year. Uh, it was a music and dance uh, topic, and we had three different presentations. Our first one was Gigi Zhao. She's a Chinese student here. She did a dance. Then we had a YouTube presentation um, by Youssef and Adele. They're from Saudi Arabia, and they showed us one of their traditional dances as well. And then we finished it up with a Brazilian dance lesson with Chelsea and Maddie, and that seemed to be the hit of the night. And the two students that taught the Brazilian dance to those in attendance, talked about why they thought their dance unified the room. Um, I think because we got the crowd on their feet and everybody was engaged and people got to meet new people. Um, somebody came up to me and said that, yeah, I just made a new friend just by doing this dance because I just asked a random person to dance with me. So I think that was really cool. And students say that it is the unity of ISCO that keeps them coming back. The most awesome part for ISCO is that you can um, meet new friends every semester from all around the world, which is the best part I, I like the most. <laughs> for Hughes, this is her first semester as the president of the international organization, and I asked her one simple question. What does unity mean to you? Uh, unity to me is becoming friends and really getting to know someone's culture and respecting them. We are Alabama's international university and um, we're one of the biggest international organizations here on campus and um, it's really important because there's so many international people here within our community and it's great to create that bridge, especially with everything that's going on in the world. It's good to have those friendships here. ISCO will meet next Thursday night after Tea for Troy to vote for its executive election positions. Justin Walker, Troy, Trojan Vision News. T for Troy will be next Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Hall of Honor. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. Welcome back to Trojan Vision Sports. I'm Sarah Drake. The soccer team lost their first two games of the season before getting their first win on Tuesday, beating Alabama State 2-0. To Tonight, they hope to even their record to 2-2 two two when they take on Murray State. The Trojans and Racers just kicked off over at the Troy Soccer Complex, so if you're not there, go ahead and go support the team. The last team these two teams met was September 15, 2013, where Troy won the match 4-2. Murray State does, however, lead the series 3-1. This game marks the second home game for the Trojans this season. The team will travel to Jackson, Mississippi tomorrow to take on the JSU Tigers. The Josh Lauer era of Trojan Volleyball begins today as the team travels to South Carolina to take on the Ospreys of North Florida. This match is the first in a four-game road trip. The Ospreys and Trojans are currently in action and at last report were tied up after the first two sets. The Trojans will continue play in the South Carolina Gamecocks Invitational tomorrow where they will face off against South Carolina and Mercer. The Trojans will then travel to Kennesaw, Georgia to take on the Owls of Kennesaw State on August 27th. Now let's go from the court to the turf where there are still eight days before Troy kicks off against Boise State to open their 2017 season. Last season, the Trojans had one of the best turnarounds in college football, going from 4-8 in 2015 to 10-3 and three last season. The Trojans will return nine starters to one of the best offenses in the Sun Belt last season. And while there is still some fine-tuning that needs to be done, head coach Neil Brown knows he has a veteran offense this season. Offensively, we, we're in a unique situation. We return uh, every bit of our production. I think minus 10 catches. Um, we lost one, one player that had 10 catches last year. With, every, with, the, with that exception, everybody else is back. So we're a veteran team offensively. Fans will get the chance to see the Trojans play at home when they welcome in the Alabama State Hornets on September 9th. And sticking with football, quarterback Brandon Silvers has been added to another preseason watch list. The senior was named to the Reese Senior Bowl watch list yesterday. The Senior Bowl features the top 110 NFL draft eligible players from across the country. Last season, Silvers led the Trojan offense, averaging 33.7 points and 260.5 passing yards per game, which landed Troy second in total offense with 429.6 yards per game, which is only four yards behind leader Appalachian State. Silvers was the Sun Belt leader and finished 35th nationally with 23 touchdown passes last season. So it's no wonder why he has also been added to the all Sun Belt first team, Maxwell, Davey O'Brien, 
All-State Sugar Bowl Manning, and John Unitas Golden Arm Awards preseason watch list. This year's Senior Bowl is scheduled for January 28th at Lads Pebble Stadium in Mobile, Alabama. So, Seth Chelsea, we currently have volleyball and soccer in action. And like I just said, Brandon Silvers has been added to the um, Reese's Senior Bowl watch list. Absolutely. All the more excitement building for football season. And congratulations to Silvers. Absolutely. Yes, yes congratulations. And with the weather going on this weekend, and it should be a beautiful time to go out and either watch some sports or watch it at home. Of course. <laughs> go Trojans. Go Trojans. Go Trojans.